Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Marvelous Monday. I'm Leslie Watkins. I hope everybody's well today. Um, I'm just going to um, turn off the fan. I forgot to turn off the ceiling fan. Hang on just a minute. Okay. I have a, um, a really fun and easy technique to share with you today. It's kind of a, a monochromatic coloring in, and it's perfect for this little bunny in the Easter Bunny set. And I have an idea that I'd like to use it on a, a kind of a treat box for Easter. So I'm gonna show you some of the um, boxes that I've done in the past using this technique. So here's an example. You may remember this stamp set from uh, some time ago with the seed pods. And you can see that it's just a, um, a stamping of tone on tone and then a little bit of uh, white and shading to help give them some added dimension. Now, this is a fairly simple uh, box. It has a little drawer in it. I'm not going to open it up right now. Here's one that's a little bit fancier, okay? Again, we've got kind of tone on tone. This one has some gold accent, and it has the, um, the beautiful vellum dragonfly wings. And this dragonfly stamp set and punch is still available and I don't think it's going to be available for much longer so if you like dragonflies please get that and I will I'll post that link below in the description after I'm done with the live video today and then finally I have this one which um, which has more punched out flowers and the beautiful butterfly from I think this is from butterfly Brilliance, which is another stamp and die set that is also still available and will probably not be available for that much longer. So if you like that, um, I will also post the link to that below as well. And you can see uh, behind this embossed background, I have that, um, that technique of the tone on tone stamping with a little bit of white and shading. So that's what we're gonna to do today. And I'm thinking I'm going to be making an Easter box that looks something like this, but featuring the Easter bunny instead. So this is a piece of crumb cake cardstock. And I'm using some, I just have some Sahara sand ink handy. You could use any ink that you happen to have. If you've got some gray or some crumb cake, anything like that will do. Um, you just want it to be light and neutral. And I think I'll go this way. I'll do a couple, I'll stamp out a couple of uh, bunny stamps. So I have a few. I'm just going to do the one today though. And I don't, that's going to be a little close, but I think we can squeeze it on there. All right, so there we go. There's some bunnies. And I also have some soft suede ink. So this is a little bit darker in the uh, neutral tones. So I'll get that out. And I have a set of colored pencils here. So these are the watercolor pencils. You can find these in the annual catalog on page 126. And it says high quality, smooth, color pencils perfect for watercoloring stamped images used with water painters blender pens or alone acid free and they come in two different assortments and I'm using in this case I'm using the first assortment 
Um, actually, to be honest, I have both assortments. Okay, so let me just show you that. So, so there are two different assortments and uh, one has 13 pencils in it and the second assortment has 10 pencils in it. And what I've done is I've put them into these handy stamp cases and I've arranged them so that I have the more colorful pencils in one stamp case and then I have the more the cooler and the more neutral tones in the other. And I'm just going to be using a couple of pencils today. So let's just see what's in here. I've got the Early Espresso. I've got Basic Gray. Whisper White. That's probably called Basic White now. These are, this is an older set. Basic Black. And what else? I'll grab my blender pen too. I'm not sure if this is, it's been a long time since I've used this. We'll see if it's still got some juice in it. Okay, so you don't need a lot. And in fact, you don't need the color pencils at all if you get the blender pens because you can use those along with your inks. I also have a clear block that has some of the, the white ink. So I'm just gonna add another drop or two. There we go. And I've got my water painters handy as well. So I'll just grab one of those. And that's basically all you need, just a few little odds and ends. And I'm, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I just wanna show you how to get started. So the effect that I'm looking for is to achieve a little bit of shading on the bunny. So I'm just going to use my slightly darker colored pencil to begin coloring him in very easy and if you're and if you're interested in learning more about shading and how to achieve a three-dimensional form and all of the um, information about using values then please check out my watercolor card club at dandeliancottagedesign.com and you can find out how you can subscribe to the Watercolor Card Club where I go into all of these techniques in great detail. And you'll also have the opportunity to ask questions and share your work so that we can um, look at it together and see how, um, how you might be able to improve it. So there's a, there's a basic beginning. Now I do, I wanna add a little bit of pink to that ear. So I'm going to go into my colored selection and see what we have here. What's this? This says Melon Mambo. I think that would be good. Just a little bit, just enough. Maybe a little bit on the nose. Continuing to work on, on deepening these shadow areas. Let's see what a little bit of white does. Good. We can get that brighter though with the ink, but that's not bad for a start. And I'm going to go deeper with the 
with the uh, accents here. So he's starting to look pretty good. And I'll give you a close up of that. Okay, so there's the beginning. We can go a lot further. Okay, I'm just checking my settings and I see Sandra saying hello from sunny California. Sandra, how was the weather where you are? Did you experience any of that crazy non-Californian weather the past couple of weeks? All right, so now what I think I'd like to do is I want to see if I can bump it up a little bit. And what I mean by that is I'm just increasing, increasing the values and I'm paying attention to the form and I'm using the movement of light to render the form to make it more dimensional. And I'm going to get my my white and I'm just going to squeeze a couple of drops of water on there. It's pretty thick and that's how I want it. I want it to be a little bit thicker and you just put a few strokes on the tail, a little bit on the cheeks, being careful to leave the, the whiskers, just kind of, there we go. Right now, let's see, let's check. I'm curious to see if, I haven't used this blender pen for a long time, so I'm curious to see if it's still got some, uh, some juice in it. Sorry, I thought I was off camera there for a minute. Let me come back out again. Let's give it a whirl. Oh yeah. It's still working. Okay, let's zoom in one more time. I want to show you how you can use the uh, blender pens on the cardstock for a very nice effect. So what's happening is that there is a solution inside the blender pen that kind of melts the watercolor pencil but it doesn't make the the cardstock too wet and then what you do to clean off the tip is you just run it on a plain piece of paper and then you'll have a nice clean tip 
So this is working very nicely. I'm just going to quickly go around Okay, now he's looking pretty good. I'm happy with this so far, but what I'd like to do is to add a couple of little highlight strokes with the, well wait, before I do that, I want to show you one more thing. So here is the ink pad, and I'm just going to go into the lid and grab some of this ink onto the, the tip of my blender pen. And I can now use this as a marker. Okay, so if you if you don't have the um, stamping markers or the blends, never fear. You can get a beautiful result just using the blender pens. And of course, I will link those below as well. And I can I can start to model this form. And by the way, I just want to point out that I haven't, I've been so busy doing other things that I haven't been using my blender pen for a really long time and it's still working beautifully. So they do have a very nice uh, shelf life. So make sure that you keep your cap on there nice and tight and they should last for a very long time for you also. get his eye a little bit darker. All right, our bunny's starting to look pretty cute. Look at his feet. I have a bunny at Dandelion Cottage who is absolutely adorable. And um, she comes out in the evening, early evening, just, just as it starts to get dark. And she's so funny because sometimes if I'm heading up to the chicken coop and it's a little bit later than usual and, um, and I go up to, to lock the doors, she'll be hanging around near the chicken coop and I won't see her because she blends in so perfectly. And it won't be until I get right up close to her that she pops out <laughs> and sort of scampers away, but she's, she's very used to me. And so um, it's really a little game that she's playing. And sometimes I'll sit on the stone bench and I'll watch her as she is grazing on the alfalfa in the lawn and I'll talk to her and she'll just kind of look at me and we have a nice little moment together. She has to be careful though. I see a lot of fox and coyote tracks in the snow and I can see her 
bunny tracks in the snow as well. So I know she's I know she's around. All right, so you can you could go on and on and um, I'm just going to stop here. Just put a couple of little highlights here and there. And the and you can I think you you might be able to see that the white kind of melts in. So when you first put it on, it's it looks very bright, but then in a couple of seconds it just sort of blends into what's underneath there and it all kind of comes together. You can help that along with your blender pen until you get it just the way you like it. Alright, so there's Bunny. Very cute. Now, um, oh, we've got some messages here. So Sandra says she received double our average rain in one week. Ground is saturated. Well, I guess that's good news, though, because of the drought. And good afternoon, Linda. Hi, how are you? Do you have bunnies where you live? I know Linda has a nice garden, so I wouldn't be surprised. All right, so um, so there's my little bunny colored in. And, um, and this stamp set did originally come with a bundle where you would get the stamp set plus this cute punch. I, I jumped on that, no pun intended. Um, very quickly because um, because with the fulfillment and the way inventories are going you do have to place your orders sooner than later to ensure that you're going to be able to get what you want so don't don't delay unfortunately this punch is on back order and is not going to be available for quite a while so um, so I'm afraid you're not going to be able to get that in time for Easter. But the shape is very easy to cut out too. So you can just fussy cut it out. And um, as I showed you in the last video, not a big deal. So don't hesitate to get the stamp set. So there's Bunny. And the last thing I'd like to do is I have my um, little sponge here. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this ink and I'm just going to go around the edges because I like, I don't like that light area that is around the, the die cuts and the punched out shapes. Now, if I were to use this on a crumb cake background, that would be fine. But if I were to use it on a white background or a different color where it really showed up, it would bug me. So what I like to do is I just like to tone that down a little bit and I'm just using this ink <clears throat> right from, right, let me show you what I'm doing. So right from the ink pad and it just helps it to look a little more finished and, um, and not like it was just cut out. Now I'm going to be using this cute little Easter bunny for, um, for several videos and I'm going to be sharing a lot of different projects that you can make using this stamp set and, uh, and, and a couple of others. So stay tuned and if you're interested in getting a PDF with all the measurements and instructions for the projects, then make sure that you use the host code, which I will also be posting below. And you can just use the link and it will bring you right there. And you will be able to get the PDF instructions for free with an order of $50 or more. Okay. So there he is. Looking super cute. All right. And then um, let me just grab one of these boxes 
so that I can give you an idea of what this might look like. So here's here's that older box that I did. So I think, you know, if you put the little bunny on there, I think you can get an idea of the direction I'm going in with this. All right. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you some ideas. I hope that it makes you want to get your uh, colored pencils out because it's a lot of fun. And I will be back on Wednesday for Watercolor Wednesday. So stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you then.